Hello friends, I hope I'm audible and visible. Can you all give me a quick thumbs up if my audio video is fine? Uh, let me see if you all can hear me. It's very, very important for us to start the revision for this month. And today we will be starting with another new set of must know questions. Uh, I'll try to make two series for this month. One is for the FMG students and another is for NEET PG 2022 students. So welcome all of you. I'm Dr. Cheshta Agarwal, your NEET PG educator on the best online platform that is an academy. Uh, my all India rank is uh, 261 in my NEET PG entrance examination and I will help you with the same. Uh, so please do watch all my classes. For the month of March first week, we have a lot, a uh, lot of interesting things. Uh, for example, uh, on March first, we have uh, at 11 a.m. we have a subject-wise test for forensic and toxicology. Then we have educated uh, curated series on March two. Fourth, we have PYQ Bank, and then we have study with me YouTube series. I also request all my students to kindly get your Unacademy subscription. You can take a plus subscription which gives you an access to Unacademy classes and you can take an iconic subscription which gives you an access to both Unacademy and Crap Ladder. Congratulations to all the NEET PG uh, or FMG students who have cleared their uh, exam. Uh, we do have a lot of free live classes on Unacademy app, which is known as special classes. You can download the Unacademy learning app and watch my special class. Tomorrow at 3 a.m., sorry, at 3 p.m., I will be taking a free live session. I request all of you to please use this code and watch this free live class. You can simply download the Unacademy learning app and you can watch this class for free. Many, many new batches are in the line of getting started. One is the Mission INICT batch, very, very important, uh, which is for two months. Then we have a NEET PG High Yield MCQ Marathon batch, again on 9th March, and this is for two months. Then we have an FMG batch. Here, uh, the batch will start in such a way that you will complete everything in two months. We also have a NEET PG 2022 All Educator Revision batch. This is the price list for an academy subscription. You can take a plus, which gives you an access to an academy, and iconic, which gives you an access to both an academy and prep ladder. Try to use this code CHESHTA10 and get your an academy subscription. Now, starting with the first question of the today's session, we have a lot of interesting MCQs. I request all of you to please read the question as a whole and try to answer it. These sessions will be short sessions of 15 to 20 minutes and I'll try to give you around 10 to 15 questions every day, which will be very important for your exams. These topics are curated in such a way that important uh, topics like uh, the uh, which are getting repeated again and again uh, will be covered here in these question series. A 53-year-old patient presented to the medical assessment unit with a flu-like illness and myalgia. In last few days, she had noticed a rash across her back. She has no other symptoms and on examination, she looks unwell. There is an erythematous rash across her back. She has grade 4-5 weakness proximally and her CK which is elevated at 1052. Her renal function is normal. What is your diagnosis? Very nice, Vidashri. It's a very simple question. Abnormal keratinine kinase, proximal muscle weakness. In addition to this, there is Cutaneous feature, very, very characteristic of dermatomyositis. The cutaneous lesions in a patient of dermatomyositis is halotrop rash around the eyes. Then we have erythematous plaques on the knuckles, which is known as Gotran's papule. We have mechanic hand, we have shawl sign, and we have a lot of other features like holster sign, ragged cuticle, etc. Moving to the next question, a 45-year-old male has multiple hypoesthetic mildly erythematous plug with elevated margins on the trunk extremities. The ulnar and the lateral popliteal nerve on right sides are enlarged. What are the probable uh, diagnosis? What can be the probable diagnosis here? Lepromatous leprosy, borderline leprosy, borderline tuberculoid leprosy or borderline lepromatous leprosy. <clears throat> Amazing. Now, here the answer to this question is not option number three. I would say it is option number four, that is borderline lepromatous. Now, always remember few tricks which you have to solve. First of all, you have to look whether the lesions are few or multiple. If they are writing few, it has to be TT or BT. But here the question says multiple, so you have to rule out TT, BT both. In multiple, 
you have to look for presence of symmetry whether it is asymmetrical or symmetrical symmetrical means it is present equally on both the sides now if you read the question they have not mentioned anything about a particular side they have mentioned that it is present on trunk and extremities they have not mentioned it is present more on the right side or left side so we are assuming that it is present symmetrical on both the sides and that is why we are ruling out bb leprosy borderline leprosy where you have asymmetrical multiple patches now you have to choose among bl and ll always remember if a lesion shows hypoesthesia it has to be bl leprosy if there is no hypoesthesia over the lesion it has to be lepromatous leprosy is this clear pancake mohammad deepa shiva then uh, narmata vedashree deepa all of you so the answer to this question can be solved easily with the help of this chart few means ttbt multiple asymmetrical means bb type and multiple symmetrical means lepromatous leprosy or borderline leprosy moving to the next question check the mdt schedule in a adult leprosy and mark the correct option you have to check and you have to mark the correct option rifampicin clofazamine depsol what is the correct answer what is the correct answer vidashree pancake mohammad deepa shiv narmata devi which of the following is the correct answer here Rifampicin 600 mg once in a month supervised. Clofazamine 300 mg once in a month supervised. Depsol 50 mg once in a day unsupervised. And clofazamine 50 mg once in a day unsupervised. The correct answer of this question is option number one. And why that is the answer? Because the Depsol which you give in these individuals, the dosage is 100 mg. The Depsol dose which you give in these patient is 100 mg. So 50 mg Depsol. unsupervised every day is not a correct answer so everybody have missed on this theek hai so mohammad namrata pancake it is not all four correct depsol dose is 100 mg so please do not make this mistake this is very very important question for your exam now this is a little bit of ortho question but we have discussed it here because uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, you know integration nowadays which we are seeing so a patient with sle have the following features and you can see some change on the femoral head can you tell me what is happening in the femoral head and what do you see or what do you expect if there is a fracture of femoral head in a patient of sle very nice uh, pancake namrata navin vidashree deepa aisha the correct answer is a vascular necrosis of the femur the correct answer to this question is a vascular necrosis of the moving to the next question lesion over the ear is classical of lesion over the ear is classical of so you can see some erythematous crusting which is present in the ear what is the answer some erythematous crusting you can see what is the answer here dermatomyositis rheumatoid arthritis chronic cutaneous le or systemic lupus erythematosus very nice amazing this is a very classical schuster sign schuster this is a very classical schuster sign and where do you see schuster sign it is a feature of chronic cutaneous le chronic cutaneous lupus erythematosus which is also known as discoid lupus erythematosus or da so try to remember the lesion over the ear is very very classical of discoid lupus erythematosus very very classical of discoid lupus erythematosus clear hai so i think this is the easy one next digital gangrene is most likely to be seen in morphia systemic sclerosis ccle what is the answer digital gangrene is most common in digital gangrene is most common in yes so what happens in a patient of systemic sclerosis in systemic sclerosis you have obstruction to the vascular outflow or the blood vessel wall get affected in those cases specifically on the distal margins 
or where you have supply with the end arteries, you tend to get these gangrenes. So this is a very, very classical feature of option number two, that is systemic sclerosis. Moving to the next question, anyone? What is the answer here? Mohammad, Vedashri, Deepa, Naveen, Narmata Devi. Periorbital ecchymosis occurring bilaterally with associated features of multiple myeloma should raise the suspicion of systemic amyloidosis, bone marrow aplasia, hepatic metastasis or cardiac failure. Periorbital ecchymosis occurring bilaterally with associated features of multiple myeloma should raise the suspicion of. Amazing, all of you. The answer to this question is option number yes. It is a case of primary systemic amyloidosis. Primary systemic amyloidosis, which is seen in the patients of multiple myeloma, what happens in them? The abnormally folded protein, which is actually the short chain of immunoglobulin, it tend to get deposited inside the bone marrow, which causes pencytopenia including thrombocytopenia and when there is thrombocytopenia you see spontaneous percura or echimosis you see spontaneous percura or echimosis identify these signs seen in paraneoplastic syndrome which can also be associated with obesity and metabolic syndrome what is the correct answer <clears throat> identify these signs seen in paraneoplastic syndrome which can also be associated with obesity and metabolic syndrome. I request all my dear students to please subscribe an academy. You can use my code CHESHTA10 to get an academy subscription. We have a lot of offers which are going on right now requesting all of you to please be a part of an academy. You can take a shorter subscription. Okay. <clears throat> if you want. Amazing. What is the answer here? Anyone can tell me the answer. Very nice. The answer to this question is acanthosis nigricans. Now, acanthosis nigricans is of two types. One is benign and another is known as malignant. Okay. Now, what is the difference between a benign and a malignant form of acanthosis nigricans? Please remember the benign acanthosis nigricans occurs in young individuals while malignant acanthosis nigricans occurs in the elderly, the old individuals elderly. In young, it is associated with metabolic syndrome, which includes obesity, which includes hypercholesterolemia, which includes diabetes, etc. While the elderly malignant variety is associated with gastric adenocarcinoma and it is considered to be the paraneoplastic condition in these individuals. Very easy. Identify the clinical condition in the image producing a rippled pattern. Prurico pigmentosa, confluent reticular papillomatosis, petriasis mercicolor or macular amyloidosis. You must have seen this image specifically in the uh, middle-aged female on the upper back. Anybody have observed this? In a middle-aged female on the upper back, you must have seen these lesions. Identify the clinical condition in the image producing rippled pattern. Very nice. Aisha, Pancake, Deepa, Narmata Devi. Then we have uh, Naveen. Very nice. This is a case of macular amyloidosis. We all know that in amyloidosis, there is deposition of abnormally folded protein. If it gets deposited on the skin, it is known as cutaneous amyloidosis. And if it gets deposited in the organ, it is known as systemic amyloidosis. In cutaneous amyloidosis, we have two types, <coughs> macular and papular. We have macular and papular amyloidosis. In macular amyloidosis, we see a very classical rippled pattern. I hope you know what is rippling. If you, if you throw the stone in a stagnant water, you can see that concentric circles around them, right? So the same thing here, it is giving you an appearance of the concentric circles like a ripple. Okay, so this rippling pattern is very classical of macular amyloidosis. While in papular amyloidosis, you will tend to see small papular lesions on the skin. Small papular lesions on the skin. Clear all of you? 
नेक्स्ट विच ऑफ दॉलोइंग इन्वेस्टिगेशन इज अनलाइकली टू हेल्प अराइव एट द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ दिस पेशेंट so this would be the last question i will be taking only short short sessions from now onwards uh, we can take two sessions every day uh, because uh, you know i don't want it to be a very extensive session because the students will uh, not able to retain if we take a longer session so which of the following investigation is unlikely to help arrive at the diagnosis of this patient put the answer to this question is the answer to this question is option number 1 trichogram the answer to this question is option number 1 that is trichogram and please remember what is trichogram you will just pull out a hair and you will look at under the microscope this is a very classical example of tinea fascia actually which is extending onto the scalp in tinea fascia you can do kirch mount to look for the hyphae you will do a wood slam to look for a very classical bluish green color and you can even do a culture but for tinea fascia trichogram will not be very useful what what culture you will use you will use a seborrheic dextrose agar you will use a seborrheic dextrose agar layer of skin with maximum desmosomal interconnection is depicted by which arrow i think it's a repeat question you need to identify the layers layer number a is stratum corneum number b is stratum spinosum number c is stratum basale and number d is dermis number d is dermis so what is the correct answer very nice all of you the answer to this question is option number 2 stratum spinosum has maximum desmosomal interconnection i hope you all have enjoyed these uh, sessions uh, kindly give us a thumbs up if you like these classes also subscribe this youtube channel the name is let's crack neat pg please subscribe this youtube channel that is let's crack neat pg we also have a telegram group with the same name if you want to get an academy subscription please use this code it will give you 10% discount on any of the subscription hit the bell icon to get the notifications of my classes and for any topic particular which you want me to discuss please do write on the comment section thank you